Are you a servant or are you a dictator? Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to find Jesus in Genesis 13 in an obscure story between an uncle and his nephew. Let's dive in. So Abram went up from Egypt, he and his wife and all that he had, and Lot went with him into the Negev. Now Abram was very rich in livestock, in silver and in gold, and he journeyed on from the Negev as far as Bethel to the place where his tent had been at the beginning, between Bethel and Ai, to the place where he had made an altar at the first. And there Abram called upon the the name of the Lord. And Lot, who went with Abram, also had flocks and herds and tents, so that the land could not support both of them dwelling together, for their possessions were so great that they could not dwell together. And there was strife between the herdsmen of Abram's livestock and the herdsmen of Lot's livestock. At that time, the Canaanites and the Perizzites were dwelling in the land. Then Abram said to Lot, let there be no strife between you and me and between your herdsmen and my herdsmen, for we are kinsmen. Is not the whole land before you? Separate yourself from me. If you take the left, then I will go to the right. Or if you take the right hand, then I will go to the left. And Lot lifted up his eyes and saw that the Jordan Valley was well watered everywhere like the garden of the Lord, like the land of Egypt in the direction of Zoar. This was before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. So Lot chose for himself all the Jordan Valley and Lot journeyed east. Thus they separated from each other. Abram settled in the land of Canaan while Lot settled among the cities of the valley and moved his tent as far as Sodom. Now the men of Sodom were wicked great sinners against the Lord. In this story, we have Abram the uncle and Lot his nephew disputing over land. But notice that Abraham doesn't strive for control or selfishly take possession of the land. He was humble enough to allow Lot to have first dibs on that land. We see here that Abraham was not seeking to lord his authority over Lot. Rather, he was serving Lot by allowing him to have first dibs on the land. This reminds me of Jesus' whole mission. He said that he came to seek and to save the lost. He came to serve, not to be served. Jesus taught his disciples to serve in this way. But Jesus called them to him and said, You know that the rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and their great ones exercise authority over them. It shall not be so among you. But whoever should be great among you must be your servant, and whoever would be first among you must be your slave. Even as the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. You might ask, how did Jesus serve us? He served us by living a completely pure and righteous life, with zero sin and then dying a criminal's death by crucifixion in our place. When we see what he's done for us and are given the faith to believe the truth of the gospel, then our desires change. We want to humble ourselves and serve our neighbors. Question for you, are you a servant or are you a dictator? Another thing about Abraham from this story that points to Jesus is how his humility toward Lot makes peace. He finds a solution to the problem and peace is established amongst the fighting herdsmen. Jesus is the Prince of Peace. He has made peace with the whole world through his death, burial, and resurrection. Paul says this in 2 Corinthians 5, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. All this is from God who through Christ reconciled us to himself and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them, and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. Therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ, God making his appeal through us. We implore you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake, he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him, we might become the righteousness of God. Do you believe that Jesus has done this for you? He has made peace with you. His hand is outstretched and the gift of salvation is available. Turn from your sin and believe him. He offers peace that surpasses understanding, forgiveness of sins and eternal life. And lastly, who do you need to make peace with in your life? I'd encourage you to take steps to reconcile with them, minister to them and give them Jesus. If you need advice or help, 
reach out to me. I'd love to help in any way I can with some biblical advice. If this video was helpful or you learned something new about how Abraham's life points to Jesus, hit the like button and subscribe. Until next time, may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all.